Hi all, my name's Ollie and this is Simply Stitchy. Now when it comes to sewing machines you've got a choice of options. You can go mechanical like grandma and sing a simple here or you can go computerised like Jerome. There's even an in-between option which I'll get into in a little while. Now I recently ran a poll on my community tab asking what kind of machines people prefer. The overwhelming winner of that poll was mechanical machines with 50% of the vote. Coming in a close second though was either mechanical or computerised with 38% of the vote. But what exactly do those terms mean? What is a mechanical sewing machine and why is it different to a computerised one? Does it really matter which one you go for and how do you know which one is going to meet your sewing needs? That's the question that I'm going to be answering in today's video. Computerised or mechanical? What's the difference and which one's better? Come on, let's get into it. The first term that we're going to look at is mechanical. Now, that can refer to any machine from way back in the 1850s all the way through to present day. Grandma, the Singer 15 behind me and this Singer Simple are all examples of mechanical sewing machines. What the word means is none of these machines are automated, they're manual which means that you operate them. They can be fairly basic machines. Singer 15 for instance is straight stitch only. The Singer Simple has just a, a small selection of stitches but more importantly the term mechanical refers to any sewing machine that hasn't got a computer chip. Some mechanical machines can be straight stitch only, like the Brother PQ 1500 SL, which it's a semi-industrial machine. But that doesn't mean that you're completely featureless if you go for a mechanical machine. If we take a look at this vintage machine from the 1980s, this is the Singer Merit 2404. And as you can see across here, it's got a selection of decorative stitches. Now those are um, achieved by changing these things. Uh, these things are known as cams or for singer machines they're known as fashion discs and basically what these do is if you pop these in this section of the machine here you can actually change the stitch that the machine can do. I don't know if you can see there's a little picture um, of the stitch on each one of the cams. But even though you can do decorative stitches and zigzag stitches on the Singer Merit, it's still classed as a mechanical machine because you have to physically change the gadget that allows you to change stitches. Talking about zigzag stitch, this is the Singer Touch and Sew 640 and it's a zigzag capable machine. You can change um, the stitches that you can do on this by moving these levers in different combinations. Again, you have to physically move the levers to get the stitch that you want to do on this machine. If we take a look at some slightly modern mechanical machines, you'll notice that with this Singer HD 4452, the stitch selection is dials. Some machines have knobs and you'll find that mechanical sewing machines are either controlled by a foot pedal with your foot or a knee lever that you'll work with your knee. Regardless of whether your mechanical machine is vintage, antique or a more modern version, they all have the same positive points. They tend to be basic machines. They're easily user operated and you're in control. You can set the stitch length and the width and decide what foot to use for that particular stitch. You can fiddle with the tension, which is up here on this one. Um, you can set it high or low depending what fabric that you're working with. The choice is yours. You can put it on whatever setting you want. They're easier to maintain yourself and that obviously you need to watch um, if you've got a brand new machine that you're not interfering with your warranty but in the main particularly with the older machines 
they're easier for you to maintain and look after yourself. So from oiling to replacing spare parts when needed, you're in control of doing that, which cuts down on uh, the price of repair bills. They tend to be slightly more reliable than computerised machines, mainly because they don't have any computer paraphernalia that's likely to go wrong. They are literally manual machines. There tends to be less plastic content, particularly in the older models. Um, the older that you go, the more likely you will get a completely metal machine like Grandma or the Singer 15 behind me. Although plastic can sometimes be an advantage because like with the Singer Simple here, the fact that it's got a metal inside covered by a plastic shell means that this is a lot lighter than some of the older machines which are completely made out of metal. Another thing to consider is, although it's not always the case, manual machines tend to be cheaper than computerised machines. I mean, the general exception to that tends to be the semi-industrial machines, um, like the Brother that we looked at earlier. Now, it's not all great with manual machines. They do have their bad points. If we have a look at the, the Singer Merit again, that has got cams, external cams. And every time you want to change to a different stitch, you have to change the cam or the fashion disc because it's a Singer. The problem is, because they're external, they're really easy to lose. And if you lose your fashion discs, you lose the ability to do the decorative stitches. Another drawback with manual machines is because they rely on knobs and in this case levers, they can be a little bit confusing to try and work out which combination or what area you're supposed to put your levers in order to get the stitch that you want. There's no needle up down button which means every time you want to put your needle down or lift it up if you're putting the fabric in and out of the machine you have to turn the hand wheel which uh, can get old very quickly. They can have clunky control features. There's no speed control if you're using a manual machine, your foot's on the pedal, you're either going fast or you're going slow. And until you've got to know your machine inside out, it's really difficult to get in between um, speeds. So like, you're not going too fast or you're not going too slowly. Now, obviously, the older you go, the more basic the manual machines are going to get. And one of the biggest quirks with Grandma here, the Singer 27 treadle and machines like her is Although they've got tension discs that you can change the tension with and she's got um, a stitch length control so you can change the length of the stitches, there's no numbers on either. So you don't always know how much you've changed your stitch length by or how much you've changed your tension by. There's a lot of guesswork with manual machines, particularly if they're this age. I mean, you might find that you've done some stitching on a project taking it out of your machine, you want to do a similar project again, but you've done something else and you've changed this and you can't quite remember how far one way you've turned it to get exactly the same stitch length on the next project, which could mean that part of your project is like really small and the other part of your project is just that little bit wider. There's no uniformity with these types of machines. The next two options are actually fairly similar but there is a slight difference and these two terms can be used to describe machines that date from the mid to late 70s all the way through to present day and they're machines that have an internal computer chip like Jerome the Janome QC6260. Although I keep referring to Jerome as a computerised machine. He is in fact an in-betweeny. He's electronic. The first electronic machine was actually launched back in 1975 and it was called the Singer Athena 2000. This is the best picture that I could find of it. Um, it had some automatic features but it also had some features that were worked with a dial. It was closely followed in 1978 by another Singer 
electronic machine. The Singer Touchtronic 2001 and this was the first computer controlled sewing machine and as the name suggests Touchtronic was controls at the touch of a button. Now these days we tend to use the terms electronic and computerised interchangeably. Jerome here is a machine with a computer chip in so he is technically computerised but he's not fully computerised although he has got some functions that are worked or controlled rather by his computer chip he's also got some functions that are manually operated like the um, automatic needle threader for instance. Now I'll get into the full differences between a partly computerised machine and a fully computerised machine in a little while but for, for now let's take a look at the kind of features that Jerome has got that make him electronic or entry level computerised. He has an LED display so that you can see what stitch you've selected. You've got push button stitch selecting controls so basically all you have to do is have a look at the menu see the number of the stitch that you want so 31 and you just push the button that gets you to the number 31. He's got a push button reverse, he's got push button needle up and down which is really useful if you do a lot of sewing where you have to do um, pivoting when you turn the fabric to go around corners that is incredibly handy because it means you're not turning the hand wheel all the time. He's, although you've got this display here which will tell you what stitch setting you're on. To find out what foot you should be using you have to refer to the menu on the top here. So like for that stitch 31 you look at stitch 31 across here which is here and it tells you you need foot H. So although he's got computerised stitch controls you have to manually select the foot yourself. He isn't programmable. He's not the kind of machine that you can sit at, start it off and then go off and do something else. As soon as you take the foot off the pedal he stops. So you have to stay with him and sew the project. Like many electronic machines of his age, if you've changed the stitch to one of these on here and you've finished sewing your project and you've finished sewing for the day and you've switched him off, the next time you switch him on he's going to default back to the factory settings which is stitch number one, just a normal straight stitch. He doesn't have the capability of remembering your preferred stitches or the way that you prefer to start off your sewing on any particular given project. Now as far as Jerome's concerned he's getting quite on in years now, I mean he's, he's nearly 20 and things with even the entry level computerised machines have moved on quite a bit since he was introduced. Um, machines like the HD 6700 or the Brother XR9550 or even the Juki HZL F600 have all got features that he doesn't necessarily have but they're still only partly computerised. You know that saying where if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck? Well the same could be said about computerised sewing machines. If you can program it like a computer, if it will behave like a computer, then it's fully computerised. A great example of a computerised sewing machine is actually an embroidery machine. They run on software which you can um, either use the ones that are inbuilt into the machine or you can download new ones and load them onto the machine by use of a USB stick which is very much like a computer. You can push the button to sew the design and the machine will just get on with it. You can walk off and do something else. They tend to have larger LED screens. They even tend to have touch screens, which you can work like you could if it was your phone or a laptop, for instance. Um, it will tell you what foot you need to put on the machine for any particular given stitch that you've set it to do. Now what we're talking here is machines like the Benina 590 or the Janome MC6650 or even the Babylock Chorus. They're all fully computerised 
machines. If we take a look at the Janome Continental M7, this and machines like it have got internet connectivity, which means that you can look for guidance. If, you, if you're stuck on a project and you can't remember how to use a certain feature, with the menu on this machine, you can go onto the internet and the manual is there at the touch of a button. You don't have to go off and find the manual and you don't have to go and find your phone to look it up on a separate device. You can do it all through this machine. It's fully computerised. Now for the purposes of this video, because electronic machines and computerised machines are pretty similar, I'm not going to be making the differential between the two. As far as I'm concerned, they're both computer controlled machines and they have the same advantages and disadvantages. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. If you do a Google search for computerised machines like I did, the top entries will be the entry level electronic machines like the Brother CS600i or the Singer Quantum 9960. With that in mind, let's take a look at the pros and cons of computer controlled sewing machines. The first couple of advantages are fairly similar to the advantages with mechanical machines in that the newer models have lightweight plastic bodies encasing metal frames, which means they're totally portable. They're not, they don't weigh anywhere near as much as a manual cast iron machine would, for instance. The tension on modern machines has an auto setting, which means you don't necessarily have to fiddle with the tension at all. You can just leave it on auto and it cope with whatever fabric that you want to sew. The higher end machines tend to have built-in walking feet or rather dual feed systems like the Baby Lock Chorus for instance and this means that you don't have to change the foot if you want a walking foot which will move the bottom layer of fabric at the same time as the top layer of fabric so you just get an even feed. They tend to be top loaders like Jerome here because the bobbins here um, it tends to be more jam resistance, you get fewer problems with it. They have LED displays or touch screen displays which means you can see at a glance what stitch you're doing. The touch screen on the newer computerised machines will even tell you which foot you should be using for the stitch that you've collected, selected even, I'm sorry, and it will even beep at you if you try and use the wrong foot for that particular stitch and you don't have to look at it in a manual at the top, it's all in the touch screen. They have automatic thread cutters, the push button controls, you've got needle up and down which is a lot easier to use than having to use the hand wheel all the time. You have a speed control like on Jerome here, there's this little slide adjusting um, control which lets you go slowly or quickly and it's a more controlled uniform approach than trying to guess it with your foot on a foot pedal. When you're using this kind of control you can't go any faster than whatever you set this to. It overrides your foot on the pedal which can be a little bit safer especially if you've got beginner sewers or children using the sewing machine for instance. Better still if you have one of the high-end machines, like I've said before, you can just push the button, let the sewing machine get on with the sewing and go off and do something else. Computerised machines do have their disadvantages though. The main disadvantage is because it's computerised you'll only find them powered by electric. Now with manual or mechanical machines you can get people powered treadles and hand cranks as well as electric machines but unfortunately that computer chip means electric only. High-end models, expensive high-end models in particular, can be confusing and a little bit convoluted to use particularly if you're not really that um, computer minded if you like. 
The biggest problem with a computerised machine, even one as basic as Jerome here, is it's got a computer chip in it, which means you have to be incredibly careful of power surges. Power surges from things like um, thunderstorms or even just a sudden boost of power towards your house can be fatal to computer motherboards, which includes the ones that are inside sewing machines. Ideally, you should be using this kind of machine with a surge protector. Now, a surge protector is something that you should be using with all of your computer equipment. Um, it looks like this. And basically what it does is it's designed to blow first when you get a power surge, so it protects your electronic and computerised equipment. Fully computerised machines tend to be a little bit on the pricey side. Whether they're fully computerised or electronic, you'll find that they tend to use plastic bobbins, which can break, and they can't use metal bobbins. Because they have um, a finely tuned um, weighted system in the bobbin, because it's top-loading um, bobbin system, if you put a metal bobbin in there, it's going to throw the weight ratio out and it's going to cause tension problems which is why you have to use plastic bobbins with these machines. They can be expensive to maintain especially if you've got a warranty on a computerised machine because you will have to take it in every so often to be serviced by your local sewing machine dealer. That can work out pricey um, and they're not that easy to work on or even to oil yourself. In fact, Jerome here is one of those machines that you don't oil. He gets his dosing of oil when he goes into his sewing machine health spa for his regular checkup. So now you know what the differences are between the three different types of sewing machine and you know what the advantages and disadvantages are of each one. Which one should you choose and what should you be basing that choice on? The truth is it doesn't really matter if you go computerised or mechanical because both have their merits and both have the potential to really irritate you. That's the world of sewing machines. The only person who knows which machine is best for you is you. You know your budget and your sewing needs. It's more important to actually get a quality machine that can help you grow and improve your sewing skills than worrying about whether it's mechanical or computerised. You need to look for one that you're happy getting out of the box, that doesn't look too intimidating or complicated to use. And I'm not just talking computerised machines here. There are some mechanicals out there that can be really scary, like this one, the Juki DDL 8700. And yes, it is an industrial machine, but Whoa, what a beast. The best way of picking between mechanical and computerised is to actually go out and test a few. Now I've given you a few ideas in this video and I'll put links down in the description box below for you so that you can go and check them out. Um, they're Amazon links because I'm an Amazon affiliate. It doesn't cost you any more than the price of the item to use those links but it does help me out if you do and I really appreciate it. If you don't want to use those links that's fine but what I would recommend you do is check out the links so that you know what machines you're looking at and you've got something to compare machines that you see in a brick and mortar store with. When you've had a look at a few and you've made your choice go for the one that makes your heart sing because at the end of the day that's the one that you're more likely to get out of the box and the one that you'll actually feel like using. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And why not check out some of the other videos I've got on my channel using either these links here or the ones in the description box below. And why not subscribe? If you click the little bell um, just below down there, YouTube will give you a notification when I upload another video. In the meantime, Whatever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing it with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.